Nice pictures. Everything okay? should start because otherwise Maria Elena will discount my time afterwards. I have to finish on time. Maria Elena? Starting again our afternoon with Monica's presentation um, that will allow us uh, revisiting some of the topics that you have uh, touched on uh, through the pre-training. Okay. So thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my idea is you, you did a pre-training. Somehow the idea of this pre-training was to have all of you on the same page coming here. So somehow what I want is to go through very quickly many, so lots of echo, no? Uh, many, very quickly on this pre-training. We will ask you at the end, at the end of the session to give us some feedback on the pre-training. The objective of this was uh, to give you some understanding so we don't have to start discussing uh, we don't have to start, start discussing what task it is, what knowledge is, although I really like very much Larry's presentation. Thank you very much. It was a very, very nice opening to the thing. So you have been this, I don't know why. Do you also hear an echo or it's only me? Is it open? Maybe this is it. OK. So when you did the, the pre-training, first question was, what is knowledge management? Aren't we all doing knowledge management? Are you, aren't you doing knowledge management when you are teaching your kid how to ride a bike? Is not my mom doing knowledge management when she's teaching me how to do a tiramisu? No, we do. But of course, at the agency, we do have, hmm, sorry, somebody copied the, the presentation that is not the right one. It's not the, la not the last version, yeah. Can I have the, my pen drive back? There was a v version one. <laughs> I'm really sorry. There was a version one there, yeah. Okay. Like this. In the, in, in the, where it says school, NKM school 2017, version one. If not, I will put my computer. Oh, gosh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't save it? Okay. So that's what I copied, there was nothing else. Is that a serious issue? Yeah. No, it's okay. But can we copy it from my computer then? No, no, something happened. I'm sorry. Well. Then you'll take pictures. 
<laughs> so have you everybody filled up the group's project form? So give me two minutes. We cannot do it from here, no? No. Copy on your hands. Can we sit? Yeah, it's okay. It's this one, I guess. Ugh. What do you want me to do? Do you want to check if it's the right version or not? Yes, it's this one, please. So then you do file, you do save as. Save as. Uh, this version one, yeah. Somehow I didn't save it into the... Why isn't it right reading the... Maybe this is what happened. Yeah, take it out, put it back in. Yeah, got it. Then this one, plus one, or whatever. Yeah, this one. Save it here. Okay, good. Sorry, I did. I should have checked that before. Okay, good. Where did you put it? No, 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 no. Come on, what's going on? No. Don't don't eject it. You didn't copy either. No. So same problem. Yeah. Oh maybe yeah, maybe it didn't copy. There, open, save, continue. Okay. Now should be okay. Okay, good. Okay, I'm really sorry for this delay. I should have checked before if it was the right version. So, during the pre-training you have this picture in many places, this iceberg. So, Larry was talking this morning about codified or not codified. So, for the sake of the course, we are not making any difference between tacit and implicit. It's not the same. But we don't want to start this discussion today. So for the sake of this course, we will treat tacit and implicit as synonyms. So we will only deal with managing explicit, managing implicit or tacit. So is this clear for after the presentation we have this morning that not everything can be managed? In the, in, during the pre-training, you also had this question, what is knowledge management? So for the agency, we have a, a definition that is very much in line with what we were telling this morning, because it's a systemic approach. In all the organizations, in many departments, in many, so we do have knowledge management. The question is, are you doing this with a certain objective? Are you doing this with, with an, to get a certain result? If you do this in a, in a systematic way, integrated in your managerial systems, then you can tell that you're doing knowledge management somehow. So this is the agency definition. Nuclear knowledge management is an integrated and systemic approach applied to all stages. Serving to a poor purpose. So 
knowledge is actionable. It's something that allows us to do something in a better way, in a more efficient way. You, during the pre-training, you also discussed a lot about managerial aspects. So how do you do? OK, you decided you have a problem. You have a problem that can be solved with knowledge management tools and processes. So how do you start? You do it small, you do it big. Do you need a written policy? What resources do you need? What is your scope? What will be your approach? There are many questions. And somehow I put these questions because also in this exercise that you are doing here with the group projects, you might think about these questions when, whenever setting your project. So is, the, is your organization prepared for a KM program? What's your governance approach? So there are many managerial aspects that you have to think about. There are also information management or explicit knowledge management aspects to be taken into account. So if you talk about information management, and we know from the pre-training and from this morning that explicit knowledge is not information, and you know, you know already that data, information, and knowledge is not the same, no? OK, what's data? What's the difference between data and information? Again, sorry? Unprocessed. Unprocessed. OK. And maybe we need the, the microphone. Or oh, you speak a little louder. Well, I would say uh, you use data versus you process data to get information that needs not to be part of the knowledge. There is a lady there who uh, is willing to say something. Uh, data leads to information, and information leads to knowledge. Maybe. <laughs> if you have the adequate circumstances around. Yeah, the accumulation of data leads to information. Not necessarily. That's, that's my maybe. It may, but it's, it's not for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. So, just then talking about information management or talking about explicit management, that was another chapter of your of your pre-training. What to manage, how to classify knowledge information systems, metadata, what tools will you use? And then the other chapter was tacit knowledge, implicit knowledge, so, which is very much related with human resources. Larry was somehow talking today about first generation, second generation. The other thing that we see from the agency somehow, it's very much in line with that. At the very beginning, people would understand that doing knowledge management is having a good content management system. Then, well, somehow they realized that this is not all. So somehow they started associating knowledge management with human resources development. It's not this or that. They are parts of. But of course, you cannot think about knowledge management without thinking about your people. And then a concept that will be touched afterwards comes. What is critical knowledge? What is critical for your organization? How do you define what is critical? You have seen this in the pertaining. How do you define what is, what is critical knowledge for your organization? Yes, please. I believe that critical knowledge is something that you cannot respond to do it. But if you can respond to do it, then confidential or audit. OK, your organization, yes. You, you cannot afford to lose. It's, yes, why? Because somehow you have certain objectives. This knowledge is critical to fulfill your objectives in an appropriate and effective manner. So this is critical knowledge. So what is your critical knowledge? Where is your critical knowledge residing? What is the risk of losing it? So we will be touching all these things in detail along the week. 
So these are things that you have seen already, and I just want to bring all these things to your head. Sorry. Then, what are your approaches? Will you do information management? Will you do human resources management? And why? Or will you do only that? More than that? And why? So there are possible drivers to do knowledge management. Either you do knowledge management because it's required, because you have a client that would say, and Ron will be speaking about standards, and from now on, ISO 9001 would have knowledge management requirements. So either you do it reactively, because it's required, either by legislation or by your stakeholders or customers, or you do it in a proactive way to improve your processes, to improve your operation. So you do competitor analysis, you do KM maturity models, and then you decide that this is good for you. It's not something that is imposed from outside, but this is good for you. So there are two trends, as Larry said, one is more techno-centered, the other one is more holistic and integral. Focus on organizational knowledge, on culture in the organizations is very much uh, tailored by culture, not only organizational culture, but also national culture, and Anatoly will be talking about these aspects afterwards. So, you know, where does the knowledge reside? Where does the knowledge reside in your organizations? Some of it in brains, we said it today. It's all in brains? No. Where else? Documents. Documents? Some, yeah, it's, it's information or knowledge we can discuss if what is in, in documents is information or it's expressive knowledge. Processes, yes, panels or processes also. Yes. Again? Mm, I wouldn't say so. Probably in the technology itself, you get a lot of knowledge in the, in the technology itself, but not the computer technology, but I don't know if it's a reactor, then in the, in the, in the whole, from the design uh, to your operations, you have a lot of knowledge embedded there. People. People, yes, of course people. And the organization itself and the, and the culture. Culture is influencing without any doubt, yeah. So these are all things that you have been going through at least first through the, in the pre-training. So things embedded in people, in technological objects, in processes, and all of them operating, operating in a culture context. So does KM relates to, hate, to human resources development? David there would say, Human resources development is the issue, and KM is somehow subsidized. I would say exactly the opposite. KM is the issue, and human resources development depends on, and it uh, helps to. In fact, it's not this or that, and doesn't, doesn't really matter. The most important thing is you cannot do one part of it without talking to others. So, Competence, in the, in the sense the agency understands competence, is knowledge, skills, and attitudes. In the latest safety guides, it's called attributes, not attitudes. But it's knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So it's related with human being, for sure. So we, you cannot do it without talking to each other. So and. Knowledge management interacts with so many aspects in your organization. To whom should you talk? Suppose you are a knowledge management officer in your organization. Somehow you were very lucky, so you depend from the president of the, of the organization. To whom should you talk?
Let's start. Human Resources Department. For sure. Who else? No, no, no. I'm talking about if you want to organize, of course you talk to colleagues, but if you want to organize senior management, if you want to organize a project, a program, to whom? So can you do something just isolated in your office? You invent something and then you go to the, and, and, and you impose this to everybody? IT systems, you were talking about this system. So human resources, IT systems, senior management. Training department. Training department, if there is a training department. Financial department. Financial department. Sorry, I didn't. If you have a research and development separated department, yes. So it's something that it's connected with many parts of it, even international relationships, even communication. Many of these things, Alina has the right words, all the stakeholders. And there are many, internal and external. So and it depends on your scope, what is, what is your list of stakeholders. So, what are the elements that you have to include in your checklist when you want to set up a knowledge management project or a knowledge management program? Can you name some? I'm trying to wake you up. Oscar. Um, how are you gonna measure the results or feedback? Key performance indicators. Risk assessment. Budget. Budget, resources in general. Technology. Technology that you might use. Policies. Policies. First of all, we must find out, find out if we really need it. Well, yes, you don't do, this is important, you don't do knowledge management because it's trendy, because uh, everybody talks about knowledge management. You do knowledge management if you have a problem that you can solve. Being this, you want to go international, you want to do more innovation, you want to be more effective in your operation, whatever, but you have to be very clear on your objective, yes. So policy and strategy, human resources development policy and strategy, methods, procedures, documentation, technical solution for explicit knowledge, approaches to capture if there is anything to capture, KM culture if you do have a supporting environment. So all these things, I just want you to have them in your head because we will be go back and back in different aspects of this. Just have this in your head. So define your project first. You were talking about that. What's your scope? What do you want to do? What's the problem you want to solve? What's the thing that I mentioned? Is this a unit? Is this a department? Is this a, what's your dimension? What's your time scale? What's your, what are your resources? You were talking about budget. So define your project from the very beginning, and of course, tools to techniques. So, and you have, again, another set of questions that you have to pose to yourself. Do you need a pilot project? Maybe you start with a pilot project, you show a good experience, a successful experience, and then you replicate this. Do you, does your company need a full implementation of this in different parts of your department? Do you want it local or company-wide? So there are many questions that you have to pose to yourself. What's the difference between a program and a project? Stupid question. Program is composed by several projects, yes. You can do a project and it's really a set of actions. Or you can do a program composed by several projects. Stupid question, but just to be sure. So you have to develop your strategy. And then what are the aspects to be considered in developing your strategy? 
does, what does it mean exactly? Does it mean the question of do I need a written policy or not? What, what, what do you mean by this, quest, this documentation? Implementation. How, how you will implement if yeah. you have the resources or if you have the... So like top down, bottom up. Okay. Good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. So, do we need written policies? Are these policies integrated into your system man management? Because one of the things that it will drive you to failure is to do something that everybody will feel like, oh no, another form that I have to fill and nobody will read. It should be properly communicated and it should be perceived as be mutual, bene mutual beneficial and beneficial for the objectives of the organization, yeah? So are managers involved? If you don't have somebody providing the resources and convinced that this is beneficial for the organization, you will be fighting against windmills. And of course, this is important. Somebody talk about culture. You cannot do knowledge management if your organization doesn't support learning. If it's not a learning, a continuous learning organization. So, before starting, context analysis. You have to know where are you standing regarding your projects. So, are you really aligned with the organizational needs? Is your project well-defined, well-communicated? And then you have to do a resources analysis. Do I have a sponsor? Do I have clear roles and responsibilities assigned? All these things, if they are not there, they will make your work either much more difficult or impossible. And also, do I have sufficient know-how? Do I have to train somebody? Do I have, to, do I have enough knowledge? Because you, you can identify your critical knowledge, and your critical knowledge might be there, might be at risk of loss, or might not be there, and then you have to either create it, buy it, get it from somebody. So, cultural be addressed. Is knowledge sharing encouraged? You know that we say knowledge is power. Is that valid in your countries? At least in mine, the people, they still say knowledge is power. If I share with you, tomorrow they will hire you and they will kick me off. So how do we overcome these things? How do we encourage sharing? We will discuss about possible active measures on that. Our lecturers will do. So is innovation encouraged? Is organizational learning the norm in the organization? If this is not there and you really are convinced that you should do knowledge management, then you have to include a change management product in parallel. Somehow you have to influence the culture of your organization. What will be your approach? Technocentric, centered in technology, centered in people? Larry said today, one size does not fit all. It depends on your problem, it depends on your organization, it depends on your country, it depends on your culture. This is interesting, which is governance. Where do you put knowledge management? Do you put knowledge management in the managerial processes, in the support processes, in the core processes? This is an example. Of course, my preference is to put this as a, in, in the, whoever is taking strategic decisions. But many people, they put knowledge management here. And if you read books, you will find thousands of books on one side, thousands of books on the other side. Whatever, what is really clear is what Larry said today, 
you need to think about governance and roles and responsibilities should be very clear. But of course, being here or being here or being here, you might have different support from different people in your organization. Tools. You might have different types of tools. Very complicated ones, very simple ones. You don't have to buy the more expensive and the more complicated, but this doesn't assure that you will be successful with your project. The tools should be adequate for you. If, you, if you're in your kitchen and you buy a super robot and the only thing you do is a smoothie in the morning, doesn't make any sense. So the tool should be adequate and tailored to your system. I have seen experiences, and I will not say where, where they said, okay, we bought this system, three million, when we did it, and we bought this equipment, we have knowledge management. No, you don't. No, you don't. And maybe you bought two systems, and then this system doesn't talk to this system. So, no. So, you don't need very complicated things just to say, I have a successful management project or program. So, success factors. Clearly defined and aligned with business objectives. If not, don't do it, please. It doesn't make sense. Leaders convinced, resources in place, roles and responsibilities assigned, and adequate internal communication. In my view, these are kind of key success factors. Not a universal science, refers to brains, refers to people, refers to communities, to communication and all things in a culture which is national culture which is organizational culture my suggestion would be implement step by step try to go step by step and as I said before properly communicated and perceived as a benefit if you don't have this so you will fail this is it. We went through all what you did, and we will go again in different, along the week, different lectures will touch this deeply. And we will go deeply in this, in this topic. So thanks a lot. And I couldn't take the time. Oh.